Did anybody get to drink their way around the world? And hamburgers saved my life. It's a super cute, family-oriented neighborhood. He ate the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, he ate the whole thing. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, account manager and avid home cook, Manali Carmarker, will share her favorite neighborhood restaurant in Oakland. It's a gem of a spot featuring amazing tomatoes and wood-fired pizzas. And copywriter Jay Rooney will spice things up for us at his pick in Berkeley. With a lively bar scene, it's the go-to place he brings friends from out of town. But first, techie and gastro-adventurer Melissa Posak takes us to her spot housed in a red caboose in Half Moon Bay. With a small menu but a large heart, it's called Dad's Luncheonette. I moved to California, as everyone does, to uh, chase a dream. And that's when I got into like way fine dining. I am Scott Clark. And I'm Alexis Liu. And we are at Dad's Luncheonette in Happy Bay, California. The journey to Dad's, it happened very fast. We found this place just really on a whim. Like, I need to figure out an answer for us so that we can spend more time together. And I found this place, and literally the next day we drove up to it. We looked at each other and we said, this is it. And within three months, it was ours. Yeah, it was a uh, whirlwind. Yeah. We knew what we wanted. We knew that we needed to do something that involved as much of the coastside community as possible. And once the context of Highway 1 and it being a roadside stand really dictated our menu. We want something that's easy and comfortable, but also healthy. It's like sit down, eat a sandwich, have some soup, and like people feel good from that. Surfing and hamburgers saved my life. I get to sneak away quite a bit. Like two or three times a week, I'm in the water, which is nice. The coastside community is a lot of, yeah, a lot of animal lovers, nature people. And they were the first people, they're like, oh, can you cook a hamburger for my dog? And uh, I was like, yeah, obviously. And it was like, oh, I went from like three stars to dog food <laughs> in like a month. Cool. We see each other a lot more, which is why we did this. Yeah. Mission accomplished on that. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, Half Moon Bay, first off, is so beautiful, yes, right? Yes, definitely. And has such a unique feel to it. Mm -hmm. How did you discover Dad's Luncheonette? Yeah, so it was definitely a, a hungry Sunday. We were driving along Highway 1, and we were trying to find a place to eat. We were getting to the point of being very hangry, so we definitely <laughs> wanted to go find some place very soon. And we saw a little red caboose on the side of the road, and we said, that looks like the spot. We saw the sign out front, Dad's Luncheonette, and the name even intrigued us even more. So when we went inside, we ordered a couple of different items and fell in love with the place instantaneously. Right, it does have such a feel to it. I mean, the background is amazing. Chef Scott Clark, who is really he's from Saison and, and Bennu and has this pedigree, but said, I don't want this life. I don't want a crazy chef life. I want to enjoy my kid. And so it's only open for lunch. Right, yeah. And I think that just gives you the greatest philosophy because he still has what he brought to the table from Saison. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that high pedigree of food, quality of food, locally grown food, but it's still affordable so that, you know, it feeds the masses. And, you know, after lunchtime, he's hanging out with his kid and his wife. Right. I think that's just 
beautiful. Yeah. Quality of life. Now, Jay, what did you have when you visited? So I had the hamburger sandwich, first of all, and then with the homemade potato chips, of which were amazing. I, I would return just for the potato chips. They were that good. <laughs> but so was the hamburger sandwich. Um, even with the egg in it, I'm normally not an egg person. Okay. But they suggested to order as is, so mm -hmm. that's what I did. And it actually, I ended up really liking it. Like right. the hamburger is why I fell in love with dads. Right. Mm -hmm. So the hamburger is so unique. First, it's called a hamburger sandwich, which don't be thrown off. It's the best hamburger anything you'll ever get in your life. Mm -hmm. The thing that's great about it, it's a grass-fed burger. Uh, so you're using really high quality meat mm -hmm. along with this special sauce called dad sauce, which is really a good tangy, tarty sauce made with mayonnaise and mustard. The chef hates ketchup, uh, right? yes. so there's no ketchup. Absolutely, and he <laughs> makes it clear that ketchup is not allowed on his burgers. So <laughs> get ready for his strong opinion on that. I, I agree A ketchupless burger. Right, exactly. Did you have the hamburger sandwich? I am a meat eater, but I actually enjoyed the mushroom sandwich even more than the hamburger because I love that they used my talking mushroom mushrooms and they were delicious. Right. They were smoky and well seasoned and tasted really fresh. Right. They were very generous with the mushrooms. For a take on a veggie burger, I thought it was it was outstanding. And talk about the bread. Yes, because mm -hmm. it is a sandwich, definitely, because you get the white bread. Mm -hmm. It's like the softest, you know, like kind of comfort food bread that you can find but it is great with the hamburger and uh, good vegetarian choice for sure. And I don't think vegetarians, I feel like vegetarians usually get the hard end of the stick uh, yeah. when it comes to going out to eat. It's always pasta or- Or some like a frozen veggie burger or something <laughs> yes. gross like that. But no, this was, I mean, again, I'm not a vegetarian, but this nice. was good. I was taking a lot of bites out of my friend's sandwich. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. The taste is everything there. And again, the chef comes from that pedigree of being a professional at like, a Michelin star restaurant, so I feel like he's definitely done his homework. And he is just the nicest person. Such a joy to, to get to know. And what about the salads? I mean, that may have been my favorite part of the meal, was just, it was so fresh. There were all of these different herbs in it. There was this vinegar dressing. It was so refreshing. I mean, I loved mm -hmm. it. And what else did you have, Jay, besides I the chips and the burger and the, the- The mac and cheese. The mac and cheese. Yes, just nice and hearty and creamy mm -hmm. and cheesy and oh, so delicious. With a little bit of crumbly wonder on top, right? Yes. Yeah. That's interesting. When I had it, I didn't enjoy it as much. Mm -hmm. it, there was crisped rice on it. For me, it was a weird sensory experience. It wasn't bad, mm -hmm. but I think um, like it wasn't my favorite. Crust, exactly, yeah. like a panko crust yeah, or something. It added a certain mm -hmm. smokiness to it, too. Hmm. Yeah, certainly it's not what you would expect in mac and cheese, for sure, mm -hmm. but um, adventurous. But yeah, they do good. also just a grilled cheese. They do. Yes. Yes. Right. I, I did end up having that. It was on the kids' menu, and <laughs> this was something that my friends and I ended up fighting over. It was one of the best grilled cheese sandwiches I've ever had. It was melty, the bread was perfectly toasted, mm. it had the right amount of grease, and we, we devoured that in a few minutes. And the soup. Mm. Soup was, we got the soup of the day. It was sort of a miso broth with, again, more of these fresh uh, maitake mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Again, really, really delicious. So even though there's not much of a menu, each dish they've really focused on the ingredients and they seem to really care about quality. And the one other thing that I'll mention is I have a little dog and we ordered him a dog burger, <laughs> which is just a hamburger patty. And that was maybe one of the things that I thought was great about the place. They had it on the menu, it was available. and. He's a five pound Yorkie. He really enjoyed dad's life. He ate the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, he ate the whole thing. Well, they do a dessert, right? Yes. What I had was the blondie. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, dad's really focuses on some of the different Asian flares. So the blondie that I had had matcha on it. It was so good and it was cooked in, in like a skillet. So you're getting that kind of crispy edges along with the skillet and it's just gooey and perfect inside. And then you have that like Asian flair to it, which I thought was a really nice compliment. All right, well, this is your spot, yes. Melissa. Give us a quick summary. So if you want a premium uh, quality food, a local setting in a caboose, <laughs> uh, go to Dad's Luncheonette. All right, and Jay? If you want warm, hearty comfort food served with a warm, hearty smile, go to Dad's Luncheonette. And Manali. If you want seasonal, local, diner-inspired food in the beautiful setting of Half Moon Bay, go to Dad's. All right, if you would like to try Dad's Luncheonette, it's located on Cabrillo Highway in Half Moon Bay. The telephone number is 650-560-9832. It's open for lunch Thursday through Sunday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average lunch tab per person without drinks is around $15.
Manali's Pick is a neighborhood destination in the Glenview area of Oakland. On nice evenings, she'll visit with her wife and dog dining al fresco. This Italian restaurant is named after Italy's most famous tomato, Marzano. Yeah, Marzano is a type of tomato that they use in the sauce for classically for pizzas from Naples. Hi, my name is Rob Holt and I'm the executive chef, co-owner of Marzano in Oakland. Hi, my name is Mana Tiki and I'm the co-owner and general manager of Marzano Restaurant. The food, obviously Italian, but um, more based around more southern Italian food as well. Focusing on flavor profiles from Calabria, Naples, and uh, Sicily. And uh, the neighborhood really enjoys it. We featured seasonal cocktails that uh, is ever-changing menu. We keep it interesting. and It is a local place, so people tend to come here a lot, and so it keeps us on our toes to keep changing our cocktails. The neighborhood is very family-friendly. We make sure that their kids have a great pizza and ice cream, and the adults can come in and have great chef-driven food, a glass of wine or a cocktail. So we definitely have a lot of people that come in here on a nightly basis that are here basically almost every single night. So it really has kind of morphed into like the quote unquote like cheers. The vibe is friendly, lively, and service filled with love. Now the, the Glenview area is, is unique and, and a hidden gem, I like to call it. There's a little strip of restaurants, I've heard it being referred to as the gourmet ghetto of Oakland, mm -hmm. and it's not quite in the Oakland Hills, it's sort of in the foothills, and it's, it's a super cute family-oriented neighborhood. We moved there a couple of years ago from the city, and we, we just love it. And if you live it. in the neighborhood, you can just walk. Exactly, yeah. we just walk, it's Absolutely. a five minute walk from Absolutely. our house. Absolutely, and what do you normally get when you go there? I always end up getting the roasted octopus with Calabrian chilies. Uh, so a little spicy, you can ask for less spice, but I like spicy food, so I end up getting that. And generally always a pizza. A Neapolitan style pizza. Neapolitan style, crust. very chewy, delicious crust, kind of similar to what you'd find in, in Italy. So Let's start with yes. what you had when you walked in the door. Yeah, the mushroom pizza was incredible. Like one of the best pizzas I've had in a very, very long time. Straight up Napolese. <laughs> Napolitano. <laughs> Napolitano. Okay. Yeah. So good. The pizza is amazing. Mm -hmm. The mushrooms are really good. Compliment to the gooey cheese and the ricotta was really good. Nice little hidden treasure in there too. And what did you have, Jay? What did you start with? So I started with the meatballs and the Brussels sprouts, mm -hmm. which were delightful. I mean, the Brussels sprouts were nice and crispy on the outside, but also cooked all the way through. And the meatballs were also delightful. Like having the, mixing the prosciutto in mm. was a genius touch. And then I also had the four cheese pizza, which I, I really wanted to love. I'm sorry. Um, but, <laughs> she uh, didn't make it. Right. Yeah, didn't make it. <laughs> and uh, most things about it were great. Yes, the, the crust was nice and doughy and mm. chewy and, and the cheese of so many so much cheese and i really wanted to love it but it just had too much garlic uh, i can um, smell you from here when you <laughs> Dang, that, that's what my say. wife said uh, <laughs> when i got home <laughs> but, and maybe it was the pizza itself because it was the only pizza on the menu that said you know roasted garlic, garlic. Oh, and, and they well, just really to be aware put garlic if, on it. just to be aware yeah. if you don't want all that garlic you can say right maybe less yeah. garlic right yeah. And that pizza comes out fast, you know, when you order, mm -hmm. it's out in yep, minutes. It's out in 10 or 11 minutes. Right. Yeah, so we had a whole bunch of food because we had some very hungry people. <laughs> uh, four people in our party. The polenta we ordered first. I have to say, like, the polenta was really bland, and I was surprised because everything else that we were ordering like was packed with flavor okay. and it was recommended by the waitress, but we didn't give up hope on her because mm -hmm. Marzano's does a really good job of like accommodating to people like myself by having two ramekins of <laughs> spicy peppers <laughs> and then also salt. So right. I was able to <laughs> season on my own, but I would have appreciated if there was a baseline for the polenta. And what else you usually get when you're there? In summer, they have the tempura squash blossoms. Squash blossoms are not in season in winter, so they've changed that to the tempura delicata squash. Mm -hmm. So they'll do that. They'll do slight tweaks based on what's at the farmer's market and what's local. Right. This recent time that I went there, I also got the hanger steak with mm -hmm. Brussels sprouts and local vegetables, which is delicious, and then medium rare, which is just how I like it with a little bit of truffle salt. 
we are big mushroom fans in my party, so we definitely got the fettuccine with the mushrooms Ooh. too, and they were phenomenal. Like the fettuccine itself was really good. It was a nice creamy sauce, very well seasoned. <laughs> and then with the mushrooms on top of it, it was excellent. Mm -hmm. So I had the County Line Farm chicory salad. It was the right amount of sweetness to balance out the tanginess of a salad okay. and the uh, the chicories themselves and the radishes had the right amount of crunch to them so I ended up really enjoying it that's the salad to go for yes okay and what did you have to drink did you have a cocktail so I had the Hemingway daiquiri it's the perfect mix of rum and sugar it's a bit strong but perfect on, on one of those warm summer nights. They have something called a new fashioned with old forester bourbon <laughs> oh, <laughs> instead of an old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Also for one of the friends that wasn't drinking, they got a mocktail of the day and mm -hmm. I, I thought that was nice that they had that on the menu and it was, was good. It was like a pineapple juice spritzer right. with some other local ingredients. Yeah. The restaurant itself has this very warm, cozy feeling when you're inside and right. there are a lot of regulars. And, and in terms of desserts, did anybody have any room? Yeah. But I often get the soft serve and part of that is because it's fresh. They have a soft soft serve machine there. It's just vanilla Strauss soft serve. I got that topped with fudge. It was a delicious sweet end to the meal and it is really good. I also had the the soft serve but topped with caramel Ooh. and with a bit of fernet on the side and oh that was oh, great. Nice. So we went a little dessert crazy. Mm -hmm. So we had the panna cotta. Uh, we also had the chocolate cream pots. The, Eau de creme. <laughs> thank you that's right <laughs> and it was delicious. It had a nice bite to it. Again you could taste the spice at the very end. Creamy uh, consistency. It was so good and I'm not normally a chocolate fan mm -hmm. and I just ate the whole entire thing and it wasn't even my dessert. <laughs> <laughs> It was delicious. Your dining guests will not be going with you again. I think huh. not, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is your spot, Manali, so give us a quick summary. If you want delicious seasonal Italian food in the lovely neighborhood of Glenview, come to Marzano immediately. <laughs> All right, and Jay? Bring a date to this wonderful, ambient, rich neighborhood restaurant with great meatballs and great pizza, but maybe tone down the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Melissa? So if you want a great Italian restaurant that has some California flair to it, go to Marzano's, great date spot. If you would like to try Marzano's, it's located on Park Boulevard in the Glenview area of Oakland. The telephone number is 510-479-1448. It's open for dinner every night. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $40. Post your favorite food shots on Instagram and have a chance to see your pics on the show. Jay's pick is a college town bar with Indian food, intriguing cocktails, and a cool vibe. A good place to tuck into for drinks and bites in Berkeley, it's called East Bay Spice Company. We like to focus on cocktails. We like to consider ourselves a bar that serves food. My name's Robbie Conroy. I'm general manager at East Bay Spice Company in downtown Berkeley. Kind of like an Indian street food, but yeah, it's got a little American twist on it. Cocktails are also inspired from the Indian background, so we tend to use a lot of spices, curries, things like that inside of our cocktails to go along with the food program. We have a pretty big process here when it comes to making new drinks. We have a pretty big research and development program here where we usually make a drink around like 40 to 50 times. We let the entire staff taste it, get feedback from everybody before we, we dial it in and say that's the one. Service here is probably the most important thing that we try to focus on, giving the customer a good experience, a good time. We have delicious drinks, delicious food, but without good customer service, you can't really guarantee that somebody's gonna come back. It's a great location, downtown Berkeley, right next to BART, right across the street from Cal Berkeley campus. So we get a lot of students in here, a lot of teachers, a lot of grad students. Big shout out to the whole staff here. I uh, have an amazing team. I uh, love working with all of them. Couldn't do it without you guys. So. Now, Jay, usually on this show, you know, it's all about making people hungry. But when you go to East Bay Spice Company, it's about making people thirsty. Actually, I would say it's about making people hungry 
and thirsty. There you go. And it is a bar that serves food in a one-of-a-kind ambiance, mm -hmm. one that I love to take people to. Right, because it, it is unique. Yes. Well, you can get a Golden State Curry. Oh, yeah, you absolutely could. The Golden could. State Curry and a nod yeah. to Steph, yeah. <laughs> which has cachaça, a Brazilian and wonderful Brazilian rum, mm -hmm. very exotic ingredients. Uh, it really does its best to transport you to a faraway land mm -hmm. and, a, and a long gone era. Right, and they do something called a passport where you can you can drink your way around the world. Did anybody get to drink their way around the world? I did try the Stay Golden, which was delicious. I have to say, one of the best well-balanced cocktails. I did enjoy the turmeric, which is very interesting. I was a little scared that it was gonna dye my teeth yellow, which is never beautiful, but it didn't, and it was great. It was a really delicious drink, and it did the trick. One drink, and I was like feeling good. And what about you, Manali? What did you, let's start with the bar. Focus sure. On it. We got uh, rounded drinks, so we got the bala and some other spices in it. I thought it was really unique and just well balanced, very spirit forward, which I like. And we also got a daiquiri, which I think it's a good test of whether the bartender knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. right. So they did a great job with that. And then we got a celery soda too, which is non-alcoholic, mm -hmm. but might. might have had fresh celery juice. It was just delicious, and mm -hmm. I thought that was also outstanding. So the Cocktails were fabulous. Right. And let's now move to the food. It's sort of Indian street food and bar food, right? Well, the, the tikka masala flatbread is my favorite. It combines the spiciness and the flavor of Indian food, of tikka masala, with mm -hmm. the texture of Italian pizza. Mm -hmm. It is the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Perfect to pair with whatever cocktail you order. And, and the menu's this big and the, the cocktail list is this yeah, big. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you have that as well? I did, and I have mm -hmm. to say, Jay's description is right on the money. We added chicken and it added mm. a really nice, good protein to it. The kebab. Oh right, yes, yeah. the kebab, mm. exactly. Yes. Right. It was absolutely phenomenal. Mm. What did you have in terms of food? So we had a few things. We had the pakoras, we had the chicken tikka masala pizza, and we also had the tandoori shrimp tacos. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm gonna say, I'm sorry, I'm biased. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% Indian. Of course. So I wasn't a fan of the food, unfortunately. <laughs> for me, I the dishes, at least for me, all could have been really Good, but there was something missing for us for all the dishes. So we took a backseat to the bar, right? Took a backseat to, back to the bar, and I thought the bar was fantastic. I would go there again for the drinks for sure, and we just got, ended up getting more drinks, and we thought the atmosphere was super cool. I had to give them a nod for all the Wu Tang uh, gear that I was seeing. I was like, this place is going to be really cool. Yeah. The bar was so hip and so cool. Mm -hmm. I almost felt like uncool. <laughs> You're not uncool. Thank Come you. On. But I did really enjoy. I enjoyed the big projection screen. I mm -hmm. enjoyed that kind of like darker, moodier atmosphere with the right. bar. I, I enjoyed it being geared to like a hipper generation. Right. So I was happy well, and about it's, that. It's kind of a, you know, the, the food is not pure Indian, as, as we were saying. Yeah. I mean, they have things like tandoor tacos, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. You get the tacos? I've had them many times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last time I went, I had the, the chicken tacos, mm -hmm. and it was just the right amount of cuts. It was nice and diced, just mm -hmm. enough where you can chew it, but not that it, like, disintegrates right. in your mouth. And then, of course, it had, you know, the, the nice creamy sauce on top. And the tortilla was also mm -hmm. kind of a nice consistency as well, kind of nice and fluffy, but not too soft uh, and not too, like, charred on the outside mm -hmm. either. And, Jay, what about the samosas? Delicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, nice and crispy on the outside, maybe not, not overly crispy, but yeah. I usually get the vegetarian samosas, which is very unusual for me but just the, the chickpeas and the potatoes, it's just the right mix of it. I usually get them to start. But so, it's kind of hearty food that will allow you to very up hearty. some of those oh, cocktails. Oh, absolutely. What other cocktails did you have, Melissa? Yeah, so a friend of mine had a mezcal forward cocktail. It was kind of like your traditional Long Island iced tea. There was mm -hmm. a little bit of gin, there was a little mm -hmm. bit of tequila, there was a little bit of mezcal. I mean, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> I think I took a sip and instantly got buzzed, which is fine. <laughs> we actually sat in the uh, dining area, which I don't know if you've been upstairs, um, but we were also peering down and kind of being voyeurs of the bar scene down below. So that was actually really fun. So it's a whole activity down there, isn't <laughs> it's it? An There's a lot to watch. There's yeah. a lot, and yes, and we, we enjoyed the crowd down there and we joined them after eating our dinner. <laughs> All right, Jay, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. If you want a multi-sensory experience, and a journey to a faraway land and a long forgone time, go to the East Bay Spice Company. And Manali. 
I'd go back for the cocktails if I was in the UC Berkeley area, but maybe skip the food. <laughs> All right, and Melissa? I would definitely go for the cocktails. I would also think of the food as bar snacks and get the pizza. All right, if you would like to try East Bay Spice Company, it's on Oxford Street at Center Street in Berkeley. It's open for dinner every night, brunch on Saturday and Sunday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. I want to thank my guests on this week's show, Manali Carmarker, who enjoys taking her family, dog included, to her neighborhood hangout, Marzano, Jay Rooney, whose pick East Bay Spice Company is his ideal cocktail destination with delectable Indian bar food, and Melissa Posack, who loves to climb aboard the bright red caboose to indulge in the chef-inspired comfort food of Dad's Luncheonette. We really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Or better yet, post your favorite food shots on Instagram and have a chance to see your pics on the show. And don't forget that you can catch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the wines and libations we're drinking today. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. 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 Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was started when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com.